G'day guys, and welcome to World Attacks with the Magnificent Margot. Um, just for something different, now as you all know, if, oh, probably about a week ago or so, I actually got the T28 Prot. Um, I haven't played too many battles in this thing. I played a couple of battles at the start with the stock gun, which is the top tier gun in the T25 Type 2, excuse me. And, um, yeah, I, I couldn't do it any longer than, like, I think three or four battles um, is what I survived for. And, um, yeah, then ended up upgrading the um, gun to just using free XP for the second tier gun. Um, I sort of thought this is the best way for me. Um, I, I, I couldn't, I wasn't penetrating stuff. I was just having a lot of trouble and it just wasn't working. Now I do like this. I did like it that these two guys have helped me and pushed me up. Because it actually gets me into a better position. And it, I don't know whether they intentionally did it or whether they did it by accident. Not sure, but thank you to those two guys. Um, it helped me get into a position which was able to stop the enemy getting up to the corner that's here in front of us on the E2 line. Now I love getting up here and then if I get up here at the right time and the right opportunities which I've done in a few different tanks um, I've been able to roll around this corner um, and shoot. Now I took a hit from the 28, uh, the jigged there and just ignored him and went yeah I, I can take a bit of a beating from you rolled up here plan on the IS but I've, I've angled my armor so I can bounce on this corner and come up here now this is a prime location I love this corner here you've got shelter from the church because they have to come right out and hopefully these guys keep you back I've got the KV-1S covering that flank and I'm in a position here where I can hold these guys back and not let them come up. And they're a little bit too reluctant to get out. As you can see, I just bounced another shot off the IS. The E4 is lining me up and he's bounced. Now, where he's basically trying to hit me. Now, this is to be noted. This gun point here is very weak. That's where the 8.8 the, um, um, Jig Tiger hit me. It's very odd very hard to penetrate that point there but the guns can't do it also the other weaknesses are around these side of the gun mantle these little flat points here and that um, E4 was in my opinion aiming for there and he has actually just I think glanced the gun mantle there you go so it's deflected off so I've been able to just use my turret wiggle it around just enough to do it now I held this corner for a very long time. Oh, there was a solid hit. Now where did that one go through? That one went through the machine gun this poor. Now I'm on the wrong corner here. Now I've got the the fours pushed up for me. Now I didn't anticipate this, but it's good to have the extra firepower here. So I've just gone to a hold down position where I can sort of deflect in some ways and hold this point. I would rather be where the E4 is. Um, a little bit across so I can sort of get a bit more because I'm not getting um, enough shots at this point in time. Um, I thought we're doing pretty good. We're in a fairly strong position. The KV-1S is still alive there with the IS-3. All my guys are still alive. Yeah, the, the, the Panther's been taken out. Is the 8.8? No, the 8.8 is still limbering around somewhere. There's also a Tiger and a Chi-2. There's another one through that machine gun that's poor. And this is where I have to start really starting to play smart to deflect these shots. The IS has been chewed up enough to not worry. But then, that was the concern. When I, I, I didn't realise it at first, but the AT-7 pulling up there made this very hard. Now, I didn't see the shot because I'm pretty sure I saw it then. And, yeah, I... And this is where I die. Um, this position is a fairly strong position. Um, I've never had too many problems from here, but it was just unfortunate that um, 
the AT7 came around and he, he did pick on me. I was the dangerous target out of the two tanks here. The E4 probably would be, in my opinion, a little bit more dangerous, but I'm the one preventing the other E4 from advancing to actually destroy the rest of the team. Now, I did quit the battle after this because I thought, well, what's the point of sticking around, I'm pretty sure. And um, I had a great run on this corner. Um, I just couldn't believe that that AT7 came up and chewed up both me and the E4 and then once we both fell it was where now everyone else started getting chewed up and there's not much else we could have done from this point. I was really annoyed that the field didn't do much. The boar sitting on the hill, the T25 sitting the back, they didn't see that AT7 until he was on top. Sorry, DC. Yeah, okay. Well, that's fair enough. We all DC. Um, so, but this position here that I'm in is actually a pretty strong position, and I've got here and a lot of my heavy tanks, and now I'm trying for my 28, and I reckon that with the top tier gun, this will be very good. Now, let's go over to my other one, which wasn't quite as bouncy bouncy. Now, I took. I think the potential damage I took in this one was like 4,000 4, potential damage received just from being in this position, I think it was, or it might be the next one, I can't really remember, but either way, this position here on this corner is a very good one. So let's go over to the other one, which is on F forward, I believe. Alright guys, yes, it was F forward. Um, now, the, what is he? As you can see, the Carnarvon over there has actually said, follow me. I don't, yeah, all right then, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll, I'll do what I can to assist you in this. Um, now, the only thing is, the Carnarvon is relatively a fast tank, because I have had one, as you guys all know. I, I owned one a little while back. Um, sure thing, I will follow you. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I will follow you. Um, I think I regret, um, to a certain extent, this this game. I I think I went to the wrong position with this tank. Um, it just it left me in a position where, at the end of the battle, I was not in in the best place to assist my team. Now I haven't got any other mods, mods, um, or tank features unlocked in this tank, bar the gun at the moment, like I really need to get um, the tracks, I really need to get the motor and things like that just to, to get the traverse speed up and get the, the speed of this tank maybe a little bit better or a bit more pick up, the speed's not going to change the top speed but at least getting to the top speed might be better so basically I'm heading up here to the centre area where the Carnarvon is now I really thought when I was doing this, I need to head up where the E75 is and the M103. But I thought, nah, the center area here, it's not too bad. I probably should have stuck to the Carnarvon side of this road. Instead, I chose to actually go inside these buildings. And to a certain extent, I am partially regretting it. There was just nothing here. Um, and that was the really disappointing thing about it. I was hoping to have a little bit more action. Um, I'm just having a drink at the moment. I've had a, a bit of a tickly throat this afternoon. Um, there's the Tiger 2. Um, he was behind the hill and the, the Lerva there, he's behind the, the, the mountain. So I can't shoot him from where I am. Um, there's a 8.8. .8. Again, another 8.8. Um, Lover comes out, and the shot I need to take was when he had his side armor, not his frontal armor. Lovers are very, very strong, and I can't do anything to this guy now, other than doing critical hits. Um, the M103, however. Oop, wrong button. The KV-4 I think was over there. No, the E-75. Um, they're in very good positions and 
I sort of... I was trying to get into a position where I could see the Tiger 2 at least and do some damage, but I couldn't do anything at this battle. It just... For a double star, which is what this battle was, it, it was shit. There's no other way. I, I went to the wrong location. I should have gone up for the M103 and the E75 instead of going to the center area. I'm just miles out of position. And... I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's just it, it's it's not working for me. And I thought, you know what? I have to push up. And right now, this is this is when I, my brain just went. I'm getting nothing in this battle. I've hit nothing. I've seen nothing, and I'm doing nothing. Eight point eight comes out. The yeah, critical hit. What do they do? Knock your crew out. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Not gonna catch you easily, but I can get into a position where hopefully you will come to me, and that's what I was hoping for. So I pulled back in the position of support, realised the 8.8 wasn't coming back because obviously he thought mm, T28 prot, he's dangerous, but not as dangerous as what he thought. Um, and I'm now in a two frames of mine to push up and stay here. Looked at the guys around the corner and went, yeah okay, they've taken tanky tank corner, I'm pushing up. He's just in the right position for me. I uh, got him. Now I've just done 181 damage. <laughs> First damaging hit all battle. I did critical hits here and there, but I haven't done any damaging hits all battle. And that's what I mean. I was in the wrong position in this battle. Um, and now that I know where where to go and where not to go, this one just when you're coming down, you need to change your mind, and that's what I didn't do. I didn't change my mind when I came down that corner like I should have, and gone. All right, E75 and the M103, they need me to go up that way. All right, cool, done. Now. I didn't continue to circle, and I should have probably continued to circle, but I actually thought, oh, maybe the E50, he's going to go down, and he's going to go scumbag humping. Uh, humping. Well, that's basically what you do, you go humping and scumbag, and I went, oh, maybe I can go back and get some more damage done on the E50, yes, let's do that. Um, so I've turned my tank around, and thought, I'm not going to make it, but I can still maybe get some snipes and hopefully he comes through the middle area, not down the back row. I've noticed that the T-54, he's gone racing up around the mountainside, which is fair enough, that's what you do, and yeah, it's sort of one of those things where it is sort of a bit disappointing because then I saw him see that tank. And that's where I knew Dan. He's not done anything I've wanted him to do. He's not gone to anywhere where I want him to go. And now I've missed out on that opportunity. Which is really, really tough and really rough. Um, I went the 54 is going to kill him. This could be actually quite impressive. Nope. The E50 the e killed him. We've captured the base. And I was a bit disappointed that the heavies didn't actually drop out. Um, it was just, I was hoping that those guys would actually um, go, oh there he is, let's stop Cap and let's go kill him. He's nearly dead anyway. But no, they didn't. They they let me down. So, there you go. Um, so that's my T28 now. I'm just getting into this. I'm, it's taken me a little bit to get used to it. Um, it's a very lumbering tank. Um, it, it just it just crawls along quite nicely. Does what it needs to do. As I said earlier, oh, those weak points just here on the gun mantle and same on the other side. And the machine gun port are very critical. You've got to protect those uh, those points as much as you can. Um, they will bounce but they are still flat panels and they are still weak so if you go up against 28 that's where you aim otherwise try to get around them um, if you can actually get now as you can see on my screen there's a, 
an arc that goes from that point there right around to that point there roughly. Now, I, I, <laughs> when I jumped in this night the first time, I thought, oh, there's a guy behind me, I'll spin my turret around, and I completely, utterly forgot. This turret doesn't spin 360 degrees, it only spins like 270 or something, and you miss out on this last little bit of 90 at the back end, I thought, oh, crap. And I was detracked, I couldn't spin my gun around, and I could have just kept my gun facing forward and shot the other enemy and I just went, I'm an idiot and that was just lack of tank knowledge at the time when I did that and that was in my second battle and I was actually playing with Kaz on that one and I went, I am an idiot okay, cool, alrighty noob moment, or blonde moment and yeah, so there you go guys, just things to be mindful of if you have a T28 or you're just getting a T28 um, I free XP'd up to the second gun just to get the penetration I needed and the damage um, for this tank and it's it, it is it's working um, but it didn't work in this battle but I just didn't have anyone to open my gun up on so yes um, I hope you've liked this guys if you have hit the like button otherwise the subscribe buttons there uh, emails there for world tank replays or if you just want to send me an email go ahead um, send me something other than junk mail I seem to be getting a lot of junk mail from people which pisses me off but lucky for me my junk mail filter filters it out um, uh, subscribe like facebook page you know, you know the drill go over there like it um, oh, um, what else is there to say that's pretty much it um, played a lot of war thunder uh, played a little bit of tanky tanks um, probably not as much tanky tanks as I would have liked to have played over the last few days, but I'm just getting into War Thunder a lot more ground forces, and being that everyone's nearly on that same level of playing at the moment, I'm trying to just get into the groove of it, get going, smash it out a bit, and, and play it as much as I can to learn as quick as I can, otherwise I'll get left behind and then I'll be fighting really good players and I don't want to be in that position it's, it was hard enough in planes getting used to that with decent players around me so hopefully now um, being that everyone is on the same level playing field on the beta live server uh, or the beta test on the live server where everyone can play um, it will be a lot better because we're all playing on an equal battlefield so yeah um, so yes, this is my first, I'm sorry I haven't done the tanks one, normally I would rotate around, um, but I've been trying to get the War Thunder ground forces out there a bit more, um, to try and build up my War Thunder community, I am starting to get quite a few people watching my World of Tanks one, and I don't want to disappoint anyone who watches my videos, I want to try and put as many videos as I can out there, um, so I'm sorry if you guys felt left out that I haven't done anything, but I am still doing World of Tanks, and I will do for a bit longer until World of Tanks gives me the shit for whatever reason, and I just go, no, screw this, I'm not playing anymore. Um, but I will say that that probably won't happen for quite a while. I'm actually hanging out to play um, the World of Warships. Um, which I'm hoping they start working on. I don't think planes, World of Warplanes, worked as well as Wargaming thought it was going to for them. I don't know why, but um, I haven't really played it. Last time I played it, it was very laggy, very clunky, and I just I, I couldn't fly a plane. It was just too hard. I don't know whether it was just the servers were new and they hadn't been set up or what, but between it and War Thunder, I just couldn't play it, and I just went nuts. Come back to it at a later date. So yes, um, that's about it for me, guys, for today. Happy hunting, and I'll catch you on that battlefield.